Jason Tracy has perfected the mindset of being the difference for his clients as founder of Roar Consulting. Jason empowers people to turn their passions, purpose, and expertise into thriving businesses or careers. He works with people to overcome their fears and beliefs that prevent them from living a life that they've always imagined. In the end, it ties together in an easy to implement system to empower, dominate, and serve. Jason is also a proud and impactful member of the Brighton Wednesday 10 a.m. SiriusNet team. Everybody, please put your hands together. Throw a lot of love into the chat today for Jason Tracy from Roar Consulting. When I play with the mute button, what is up, everybody? I am coming live to you from the Brighton co-work space downtown and their lovely accommodation with their podcast studio. So super pumped about that. Super excited to be here today for a couple of reasons. One, as a lifelong Spartan fan, it's pretty awesome to share a virtual stage with a guy like Anthony Ayani and reading his book and seeing how, you know, knowing how impactful his story is. You're all going to love that. And, and, and also another incredible person with Wendy Caverly. I'm super excited to hear her story later on. Uh, second reason is I get to talk to my people. I mean, I, I know so many of you. I have a lot of you are my friends. But most importantly, it's, it's, this is a room filled with heart-centered entrepreneurs that believe in building relationships of no like trust. And that's really what we're going to talk about today. Uh, and then lastly, what was super excited is I didn't come to Steve and say, hey, I want to talk to you about this topic. Steve called me up and said, hey, I've observed your communication. I've listened to your podcast. And something that stands out to me is your ability to listen. And I'd love for you to talk to you my people about that. Now, what's so amazing about that and what is, you know, what, why I take so much pride in that is because to me, that is the foundation of my Be The Difference system. When I got into sales, it was actually 22 years ago this month. So that's how dates how old I am. I was in sales for 22 years. I've been in sales for 22 years or in that sales field. So I got into sales because I, I don't know what it was. I felt like I was good with people. I didn't know what it was at the time. I didn't know what it was that I was doing, but at work, people would do my job for me without me asking. Uh, I was able to get things between departments that other people couldn't get because they had feuds with people in other departments. And they, you know, there's, there's uh, um, angst there between people. Um, in just in life, people would open up and tell me their life stories. And I didn't know what it was, but I knew that I needed to make more money. And so I jumped into sales thinking, I think I'm a pretty persuasive guy and I'm going to do this. So, but the problem was I didn't know what it was that I was doing. I just had the blanket statement. I feel like I'm good with people. And because I didn't know what it was I was doing, I had absolutely no confidence. And so when I got into sales, they started teaching me all the, all, the, all the ways of sales, all the gimmicks, all they gave me a script. They told me to go home and watch the movie, The Boiler Room and said, that's exactly what we do. Now, first off, The Boiler Room is a great movie. Go home and watch it, uh, it hyped up. Great. I love the movie itself, but it gave me a lot of anxiety. And because I was being trained with all these ways of what I saw sales as, as being gimmicky and, and slimy, I felt like a fish out of water. And I struggled. I struggled so hard that I had my vehicle repossessed. I got eviction notices. I really fell into financial hardship. And luckily I got a job and I got this sales manager that saw that I was really struggling with my identity and struggling with, with sales and said, Hey, you know what I would do is go out there and shop the competitors, go out and shop other salespeople and see what it is that they're doing and what makes them successful. And so I did. I shopped, I, I spent a lot of time out of work going and shopping salespeople of all sorts. And I thought I was going to learn all these amazing lessons and best practices from them. And I'm like, this is horrible. I'm not learning anything. And then I had this major realization. Oh my God, it does not take much to be different than, than the average. Nobody out there is listening. Nobody. And then I started realizing that was what I was doing. That's what I do in just my normal life as I, as, I, as I ask questions and I listen because I was just kind of naturally curious. And then here's a really big secret. I wasn't confident in myself. I, wasn't, I didn't want to talk. I didn't want to talk about myself and what, I, what it was I was doing. So I would ask other people and get to know them. And guess what? It worked out. It was working out for me. <laughs> and I didn't realize it at the time. But wasn't what wasn't working out for me is trying to sell. Raise a hand. Who loves to be sold here? <laughs> Denise, you almost raised your hand. <laughs> Nobody loves to be sold, right? So why 
does listening, why does truly intently listening to people, why does that make you different than most people out there? Well, because most people are operating, sales in itself is operating from an inward mindset. And what that means is, is inward is I'm worried about everything that's going on inside me. When I got into sales, I was worried about making commissions. I was worried about if I got back to the office and I didn't sell anything that my boss was going to write me up or put me on a performance plan or worse yet, maybe I'll be fired. I was worried about, can I eat today? Can I make money? And so when I'm thinking about those inward things, am I thinking about and listening to the person across from me? Absolutely not. Right? So why does this work? Why does it work to really... I'll, I'll, I'll use this phrase, God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. We, we can see sales. I think sales gets this rap a lot of times where you think that you got to be the fastest talker. You got to be able to say the right words. How many of you have anxiety when you go into a sales situation thinking that you have to have all the answers? Ah, that was me. I thought, you know, and, and I see that with a lot of salespeople I work with. You feel like you have to know all the answers. Well, guess what? The most important person across from you is not you. The per most important person in the room is not you. It's the person across from you. And I think everybody knows this deep down. The problem is we're human. And it's so easy to get caught up in our emotions. So you're not a bad person if you're thinking about yourself. Guess what? You're human. Guess what? I taught this to people in a whole entire organization that I, I was able to help an organization that was bankrupt financially and culturally and turn them into one of the highest producing organizations in the industry. And it was all around this, this platform. Um, is able to do it because, because nobody is out there listening. Right. And so, but everybody says they are, there's so many people talking the talk. A few months ago, I was having a conversation of just a connection building meeting with somebody and they, spent the whole, half, whole first half of our meeting telling me about how they were different. What makes them different? They listen to people. They ask questions. They discover. They never sell anybody that doesn't, doesn't want. They never sell anybody that isn't a good fit. And then they spent the next 30 minutes taking me through their sales presentation without discovering, without asking any questions, and without seeing if I was a fit. How do you tell people that you listen? Do you tell people that you listen by telling them you listen? Or do you tell people that you listen by simply listening to them? Now, here's a shocker, everybody in this room, because you're all heart-centered, because you all believe in building no like trust, raise your hand. Do you think that you listen truly and intently, 100%? Don't lie to yourself, all right? We can all improve. Guess what? I taught this system. I taught this and I did this myself. I knew what made salespeople successful. I knew it. But when I started my business, guess what I was thinking about? How am I going to make money? How am I going to pay my bills? I, don't, I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel, right? And so every meeting I was going out to, even though I knew about outward mindset, even though I, 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 would, t I would work with clients that I had and I'd teach them about how to listen to people, but every meeting I went out to, I was thinking, how am I going to make money? Oh my God, I need to pay my mortgage. Oh my God, I need to eat. And so guess what? I'm drilled down so far in thinking about me that I'm upset when somebody tells me they don't want to do business with me. Does anybody get that way? When somebody tells them no, all of a sudden you're upset? It's because we've always already counted the dollars, right? We already thought that that was going to be a sale. And then they told us no. So here's, here's a first absolute trick. I, 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 you're, you're never fully outward mindset. All right. We have to, this is something you have to do every single day, every single time you're meeting up with a person. And I know because I know how easily I can fall out and think about myself. We're human. It doesn't make you a bad person. But when we know that this is our natural tendency, we can fix it, right? And so every time I meet up with a person, I do a quick little meditation. I start asking myself, who is this person? What are they about? Why do they do what they do? What are their challenges? What are their obstacles? What are their goals? How can I serve them? Now, is serving them meaning that I'm getting business? Maybe, maybe, but maybe serving them is connecting to somebody like Steve or to Robert or to Denise or to Doug, or maybe it's 
serving them by letting them know about an amazing workspace downtown called Brighton, Brighton Cowork, right? Maybe I'm, maybe I'm serving them in a way that doesn't include my dollars, my pocketbook. But if I'm truly listening and I can find a way to serve them and connect them, what does that build? Do they know me and like me and trust me at that point? Now, maybe they're not my client, but would they be, would they, do you think that they have a higher propensity of referring people to me? I'm telling you what, no, whether you think that you truly listen or not, 99% of conversations out there in sales situations can get better. We might listen to parts of it, but we're not truly diving in and finding out what's going on in people's lives. The other day I connected with somebody on LinkedIn and I asked everybody I connect with on LinkedIn, what makes a connection great for you? I truly want to know. I want to ask them a question as opposed to sending them a, a message, six paragraphs long, talk, telling them about how amazing I am, right? And every single time people say, that's an amazing question. Well, this lady said, you know what I am tired of? I'm tired of people sending me six paragraph long messages telling me that they can sell me and, and do the, make my business the most amazing business. They can solve all my problems. But ironically enough, they never listen. Listening is like common sense, right? It's valuable. It's attractive. We all say we have it, but very few do, <laughs> right? So everybody in this room has the chance to truly be the difference just by doing this little meditation before you go out and have a conversation, slow it down. Don't think about what you want. Don't think about paying your bills. Think about what's going on in that, with that other person. Do that quick little meditation and adjust your perspective. Once you shift your perspective, will you get business out of it? Is there a chance that you can sell them? Absolutely. But you've got you've to ask them questions and really get them talking to really, to really, really make that difference. Being more likable. You know, I, I had this, uh, Patrick, Patrick knows this, uh, th this guy. I had, I, my boss had this, has this husband. He's a partner in a law firm in I'd, I'd worked for this company for four years and never had a conversation with him. One day I felt ran into him or it was a holiday party and he was over in the corner of the room and I went over and I started talking to him and I had a 45 minute conversation with him. I was curious. I didn't know much about him besides he was a partner in a law firm. So I sat and I asked him all these questions, you know, what does your, what, what does your job look like? What do you do during the day? Well, tell me about some of the cases that you try. We sat and we, he was so elated to talk about himself. The next day I went back to work and my boss said, what did you say to Rick? I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, Rick has been raving for the last two days about how you're the best conversationalist he's ever met. Did I talk about myself one single time? Not, absolutely not. We talked about Rick. We talked about what he liked to do. We talked about his cases and I learned a lot about him. Now, if I had a product to sell to him, do I have, do I have a better chance of selling to him? He thinks I'm the best conversationalist he's ever met in his whole entire life. He's raving about me to other people. What kind of brand are you leaving out there? Are people glad you're leaving the room because they're, they're like, they, they can finally breathe because you talk so much? Or are they like, I want more of that. I want more of that. How important is it to listen? A month ago, I was talking to one of my friends and she was telling me a story about how she had hired a caretaker that comes twice a week to meet with her mom because her mom has dementia. And her and her dad were very concerned about bringing somebody in from the outside because her mom has dementia. And she, is she going to freak out that there's somebody, a stranger in her house? But the fact of the matter is, is, is my friend and her dad needed to get out of the house and get things done because they were just worried about taking care of the mom and the wife all the time and worried that she was going to get out. And they had all these, you know, they couldn't live their own lives. And so they brought this lady in and Stacy was telling me about how it was the most phenomenal, most beautiful process that she's ever watched. She said, this lady comes into the house and she's 5,000% there for my mom. She asks her questions. She talks to her. She listens. She laughs at her jokes. She makes her feel truly valued. And this lady with dementia that they were so concerned about bringing somebody in from the outside literally cries every time this lady shows up to the house. She's so excited because somebody is there to listen. Why does working, why does listening work? Why does it make you stand out and be the difference? Because most times even our loved ones aren't listening to us. It's all about being, being seen, felt, and heard. Maya Angelou says it really well. Nobody cares what we say. Nobody cares what we do. They only care about how we make them feel. And when somebody can 
truly just sit back and listen, ask questions and observe in you're making them feel seen, felt, and heard to the point where people get emotional, including somebody that has dementia and may forget who this person's, what this person's name is, but knows how it, it so internally can remember how this person makes them feel that they, it stokes up emotions. Be that person. Be that person that when you walk in the room, people are so elated because they finally have somebody that seen, feels, sees them, feels them, and hears them. And guess what? If you're working with clients and you're literally listening to what's going on in their life, you're going to sell more because there's going to be more ways that you can solve their problems. But they're going to tell all their friends, you're going to be the difference, right? So here's another tip. What kind of questions do you ask? Ask questions that begin with the who, what, where, when, and how. And I particularly love this question because I could carry a conversation with any one of you for a whole entire hour just by saying, Tell me more about that. Denise, a few minutes ago, you said something about this. Tell me more about that. Tell me more about that. We could have a conversation literally for an hour. And if I'm listening, I can pull your story. I know why you do what you do. I know what challenges you're facing. And most importantly, I know how I can serve. Go out there and be the difference, everybody. So any questions? I can unmute everybody. Yeah, first and foremost, let's put our hands together for an incredibly insightful presentation uh, from Jason Tracy, who has made a life out of being the difference for his clients. Uh, we do have an opportunity for any questions that uh, anyone has. You can either throw them in the chat or just go ahead and unmic uh, and ask Jason, uh, a uh, Jason any question that you might have at all. And don't be shy. Uh, real quick, Jason, great stuff, awesome stuff. Uh, Got to make a confession when you said, you know, do you listen intently? I was literally following up to a text. Um, <laughs> right. So how do you how do you multitask? What are some of your tricks for multitasking? Because you do, you are a really good listener, and you always seem available. And I'm always like. But you always seem like not in a rush. You're just like, yeah, hey, how's it going? You know, ready to meet anytime. So, yeah, what are some of your tricks for multitasking and, and how you manage all these different things? When, when you're with another person, don't multitask. If you notice, whenever we've had a meeting, my phone is down. I have the vibrate off. Uh, I'm not paying attention. My wife gets upset with me because she'll call me if I'm in a meeting or if I'm having a conversation, even if I'm just having a conversation, she'll call me and she'll get up, she gets upset because I won't answer. But if I'm in the car ride with her and somebody calls me and we're having a conversation, I won't answer. So it's just the courtesy that I've had for a really long time of, I'm not going to multitask. Uh, and multitasking is became very a very overrated buzz term for a long time, especially working in retail is that you got to multitask. If you're multitasking, you're you're dealing with multiple people poorly. Now, especially, I, I don't have all the time in the world. So I make my conversations meaningful and impactful, and then I move on, right? Because there are other things I got to get accomplished. I do have to cut off conversations sometimes. Sometimes I do have more time than others, but sometimes I do have to cut off a conversation. But when I'm in that conversation, I'm in that conversation. I'll jump in. I just want to thank you, Jason. What a great thank you, Maria. talk. And I want to just add a contribution, which is it's energy, I think, too. People sense the energy of listening. And you're magnetic when you're fully present. And that's the essence that you bring to all of us. But, you know, it's, it's energy. It's vibration. It's as simple as that. And it's powerful. So great talk. Thank it, you. It, it's powerful. When you listen to somebody and you can say, tell me, Maria, earlier, you told me about this. I would love to know more about. Nobody does that. Yeah. People ask me all the time, how did you get Be The Difference? Because nobody's doing this. It will literally make you stand out and be the difference. That's right. And everybody says they're doing it. Mm -hmm. Stop talking the talk and walk the walk.
Another great way to not multitask when you're meeting with somebody is take notes. Doug Moffat is an expert note taker. That's why he doesn't miss anything because he can also go back and review what it is that he talked with somebody about. Clark Bradley, you had a question. Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Jason. So um, I've heard different techniques or like uh, acronyms for rapport building or asking questions when you get to know somebody that you've just met you know, forum, right? When you, when you try and find, if you're familiar with that, try and find out a little bit more about them. Um, I don't know if there's any, any pointers you have with that, with just getting to know people, um, you know, asking those particular questions. And I guess it just kind of comes down to personality, but anything you can shed there in terms of, uh, I would say it's so discovery. Easy. It's always so easy. We make it so hard. What do you want to know? Yeah, what I guess that's it. Them? Right. Yeah, that's true. What would they want to tell you about themselves? <laughs> mm -hmm. But then if you're in sales and you literally do have a product or a service that you're selling, and that is the overall intention, you, it's also being intentional and having questions that you know will help you understand if you can serve them. Yeah. Cool. Denise. Not so much a question, but more a uh, build on what you said is um, a phrase that I taught in sales training was, when you tell, they resist. When you ask, they assist. Yep. And, and if we think about it, we hate telemarketers. Notice it's not called ask a marketing, right? <laughs> so it's about... Uh, and again, um, my favorite opening in even a trust builder is, so tell me about you. How did you get into this? You know, why this? And so on and so forth. And you can let them do a lot of talking. And um, it, it, it doesn't have to be difficult. And anytime when I'm nervous, I don't know about other people, but anytime I'm nervous, my focus is on me. It's like yes. you were saying, yes. Yes. it's not on the other person. And the only way to be un to not be nervous is to focus on them. Well, have, you ever, have, an yeah. have you ever went to a, a meeting and you had made all these assumptions and you do a talking presentation? That's why I hate sales presentations that are all made up and pre-made. I don't know this person. I want to ask them questions so I know if I can help them, right? Right. You right. have all that pressure of I've got to have this perfect presentation. Yes. I've got to say all the right words. You're so key, so spot on, Denise. It's like anytime you're nervous, it's because you put the pressure on yourself. Go into and, and every I, conversation like they're a friend. Learn about yeah, it. Yeah, I think I think you've also uncovered and you've uh, um, been aware of and discovered that it is about um, uh, being over there in their world, not over here in your world trying to tell them how what you do fits into them, but it's about being <laughs> over there. And you don't know where to go until you talk to them. Yes. Otherwise, you're a solution in search of a problem. So. A book I highly recommend reading that will dive more into the inward outward mindset. In, it's the most powerful book I've ever read. Is how to how, um, Leadership and Self-Deception by the Arbinger Group. Highly okay. recommend that book. If, if, you've, if you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so I, I'm tasked with being the timekeeper for today to keep this event moving absolutely on track. Um, again, one more time, let's put our hands together for Jason Tracy for just you. doing a great job, uh, helping us understand the difference between saying we're listening and actually doing it. Um, we have two live networking sessions. One's going to be starting in just a moment. If you go back to the landing page when we leave here, uh, click on networking session number one. I'll see you there and give you instructions so you can make new connections today in between our speakers. Our next speaker is Anthony Ianni at 10 a.m. Jason, thank you so much for a great job today. Thank you, everybody. I look forward to seeing all of you now in the networking session. Go back to the landing page and click on networking session one.